Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is part number two of a five-part series. If you have not watched part one, please take the time to do that. Click a link below, click another link on the page, watch it because it's really setting up today's study. We're gonna talk about firm resolution. But before we get into that, let's pray. That Father, in the name of Jesus, you would please speak to our hearts. Amen. From Jerusalem to Babylon is where we're going in this series, looking at Daniel chapter one. And in our first part of this study, we talked about how faith does not eliminate pressure. It's, it's the reality of, of perfect peace in an imperfect world. We're sinners saved by grace, but we're not saved from this world. But we're called to be lights in it. And we can do that with firm resolution. That's what Daniel and his friends did. So what we can see in this study today is that we should never underestimate the power of our choice. Never underestimate the power of your choice. It's been given to us by God. He even chose to make it sacrosanct, uh, to make it something that he himself could not touch or violate. We're free to use it. And when Daniel and his friends choose to put their faith under pressure in him, look at what it's able to do. With firm resolution in Daniel chapter one, verse eight, the Bible is clear to say that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, Therefore, because of this decision, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel was not looking to a hookup from anybody. He wasn't looking to ingratiate himself with the prince of the eunuchs. He wasn't even trying to find favor necessarily with the king. Now, he wasn't trying to go out his way to upset these people. But primary and prime in their focus was the firm resolution to go with God, to do what he said no matter what. So when the Bible says he purposes in his heart, I love that because it doesn't take a lot of money to do that. In fact, it takes no money. It, it, the currency is our will, not cash. It, it doesn't take a, a, a lot of, of experience. You don't have to be old to do this or educated. These are young boys. And while they were bright, they had not been educated in the highest schools of that day. But they did have enough sense to know I'm going to go with God. We've got to go by the God that our family has taught us because not only is he all he know, we know, but he is the only one who's going to deliver us from this. So when Daniel made this decision, look at what happens there in verse 11. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Remember, these are their native names. So now they have these new names, Belteshazzar, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The names had changed. The, the Babylonians had changed the label but the contents were Christ. They maintained. And because of the content of his character, Daniel speaks up. That's why we highlight that portion of scripture. Daniel says to Melzar, sometimes when we've made a decision, we have to vocalize it. Yes, uh, talk is cheap. Um, actions speak louder than words, but they don't erase words. We have been given two ears and one mouth. Yes, we should be apt to hear, but we do have a mouth. And that's to be used and is to give voice to the decision that we've made. Sometimes when you're with your friends, it's not enough to just say, um, I don't do that. But you have to say why I don't do that. And it can't be because, well, my church won't allow me. No, no, no. Because of my commitment to Christ, I want my body to be pure. So I'm not going to partake and I'm not going to participate. When I'm in a situation where people are trying to figure out what to do and, and it's in a situation where people are just relative, you know, well, you know, that's your thing and this is my thing. God wants us to lift up a standard. I, I recently heard a message that was given and the, the message was encouraging people to not voice what was wrong. And by voicing wrong, then that would be taken as condemnation. I don't see that as scriptural because when Daniel speaks to Melzar, he speaks what is right. Now, when someone asks me the question of what they're doing or if their lifestyle, if their choice is right or wrong, I have a responsibility as a Christian to tell them what is right. And to tell them what is wrong, particularly if they ask me. No, it's not my job. I don't have a heaven to give them or a hell to send them to. I'm not in the condemnation or commendation business as a Christian, as a father, as a husband, but as a believer. And I know what is right. We should tell people what is right. When people ask us direct questions, when they ask us straight up, is this wrong? We have to speak up and say yes. One, because they're asking for an honest answer. And two, because what good, what good is it to give them hope of a better or of a different or of an alternative if I leave the alternative to them? If the alternative is relative, then so is righteousness. And we know that'll never work because Bible says, the Bible says, 
We're saved by grace through faith in one, not in ourselves. That's faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. So he speaks up. And here we see in verse 12, he speaks up and he says, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, 10 days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. He says, I'm going to back up what I'm saying by you trying what we're doing. Try it. Trial us. Give us 10 days so that if what I'm saying is not legit, then it'll be shown. Time always tells the truth. And so when people ask us what is right or what is wrong, point them to experience. Point them to not circumstantial evidence, but your testimony. I know that this doesn't do me good because I used to eat it. Or I know that this is no good because I used to watch it. Or I know living that kind of lifestyle leads to this because I've seen, I've read, I've heard. These are things now that trial what we speak up. All this coming from what? A firm resolution, a choice. Make a choice today. Make a choice and stick with it. Because guess what? Jesus made a choice for you on the cross and he literally stuck to it. Let's stick with him. Hey, if you enjoyed today's lesson in prophecy, be sure to visit our website, changeministry.org slash the highway home. Here you're going to find two visual studies that guide you through every prophetic event from now until the coming of Christ. And you'll even find a step by step study that goes deeper into the word of God so that you can find both the peace and the power that comes from the promise of Jesus's return.